I was into womanizing and drugs and other shameful things. I did these things in secret, so I thought I was going to be okay. I was only eight when I first questioned God's love. I had pondered at a very young age how a loving God could allow the dignity of an innocent little boy to be stripped away by the molestation of a heartless man. I still have that memory in my head after that incident, being in the bathroom alone, trying to scrub the filth off my body. From that experience, I have made two conclusions. There was no more point trying to live a righteous life because I have been defiled and the, the scars are permanent. Second was the lesson, as long as I don't tell anyone about this, I will be okay. But just a year after I started my practice as a doctor, show business opened its door for me and bid me enter. And sure enough, I got what I hoped for. Fame, influence, wealth, and women. Pride crept in, and in no time, I was into womanizing, drugs, and other shameful things that only a man perverted in his thinking could do. I did these things in secret, so I thought I was gonna be okay. But the truth is, in my quiet times alone, I felt a very deep emptiness inside me. In December of 2008, my own best friends conspired to expose my double life to the public. In May 2009, I received a call from a stranger asking me to pay 4 million pesos or else the scandalous videos will be released to the internet. I did not give in to the demands, so on my birthday, May 20, the videos were released. Of course, the videos went viral and everyone feasted on this. It became the banner headline in TV news and radios and newspapers and blogs and other social media networks. I was dragged to the Senate for a humiliating public hearing. The Board of Medicine decided to revoke my license to practice medicine. In one survey, I was voted the most hated man in the country. In one fell swoop, everything I had was taken away from me. My second failed attempt made me think there must be a reason for my life and there just must be something or someone out there who's in control of my life. I began a very serious spiritual search. I went to the talk feeling out of place, a reluctant listener, and Dr. Ravi arrived, didn't know that he was gonna be the speaker. But after dinner, the guest speaker gave an unplanned message that resonated with me powerfully. So powerfully that after his talk, I raised my hand to ask a question. My question turned into a confession, and then my confession turned into my submission to the cross of Christ. I committed my life to Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. My life isn't perfect, and I am not perfect. I still have my struggles until now. But as I grow in my relationship with Jesus, He gives me the grace to resist and overcome sin. My transformation is not yet complete, but I trust that He will finish the work that He started in me. I don't worry about my past anymore, nor am I anxious about my future, because as Paul would put it, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. My name is Hayden Coe Jr., once lost, but now found by Him who redeems, who confirms, who strengthens, restores, and makes things all new. All glory to God.